today's video, we got a question from a viewer. Guy's name is Casey. Thanks for your question, Casey. And by the way, if you ever have any question of your own that you need help getting an answer on, feel free to shoot over a message or an email, which is a blessing all over all the videos. It's always in the description. You can always get, a, get in touch with us at sales at lesgoelectronics.com. Um, just come on by, tell us what you're feeling, what you need help with. We'll be happy to try to help you out. If I know the answer, I'll be happy to post the video just like I am here for today's uh, viewing in Casey. So Casey's thing is this. He says, thanks for the advice on buying a car loan. You went ahead and bought an 830i8 from me. Thank you. Um, so anyway, um, he's, he's basically saying here he's buying an expensive new trailer and he wants to add a sensor for his truck to the trailer so that way if the trailer is removed, the cut alarm will activate. So that's the first thing. And then moving on, he's saying, can I splice an existing line and have an installed pin switch or do I need to add any other components at the splice tying it into what he already has up front at the truck? So I'll get to that. Number two, he's saying, do I have a product on the site that's available for a phone order? Actually, I have a lot more than one. I'm going to show you all of them. Uh, and lastly, he's saying he has the A30 i8, A30 i8, and he has some distance and sun-related issues with the remote. He wants to know he, if he has a transmitter or if I can offer something that'll work further away because he may also need a replacement soon. So you got a couple good questions here. And you asked the right guy because I have done this job for many people um, in the past. Um, and I think I finally got it down to a science so that way if I were to go ahead and do this for my own self I know exactly the, the, the choices that I would make, what products I would use and exactly how I would install them. So I want to share all those with you right now Casey. So here, here we go. So first off, uh, let me address the fact of your range. Okay. Now on your 830i8, that's a two-way LCD remote control. Okay, so I'm going to say that on an average day, you're going to get about a thousand feet. That's that's a low figure because I know it's rated at 1500. But I try to keep things real and I try to keep them focused towards you know the worst case scenario. So let's just say that you have a thousand foot that you're working with. Um, in a truck trailer application, I've actually seen people where they had the trailer parked on a job site, and these guys could be working up on the tenth or twentieth level, and actually look down and see people actually robbing their vehicle while they're staring at it. It's happened. I know it's crazy, but it happens and it happens a lot, unfortunately, in today's world. So first things first is that if your remote's not going to work because it's definitely not going to work, work in that scenario, your A30 i8, like most alarm systems that are good these days, can work with car links, such as this one here. This one here is actually for my own alarm, which is an A30 i7, the year prior model. And there, there you go. This one here can work worldwide. All you gotta do is have, it, have an, um, an Apple iPhone or an Android compatible phone, get the app, get the CarLink module, which is a couple extra hundred bucks. Yes, I sell it on my site. Purchase this as the CarLink. The new model right now, as of 2014, is called the CarLink GPS. So it does CarLink two-way remote control via your smartphone as well as GPS tracking. So it does both as a combination. Now, here's the tricky part. You wanna have your vehicle protected as it already is and you want to tie it into your trailer and you want to have that in and of itself protected but how do you control one to the other here's how you do it and here's just an average guy In most cases you have an e 30 i which is that you have an alarm or a remote start you're obviously not going to use a remote start for your trailer so what i've used mostly in the in the past is something like this doesn't have to be exactly like this but this one here is made by canine it's another omega product and this comes with not one, but two LCD remote controls. And this is basically your system just in the canine family without the remote start. Because from my past experience, whenever I did these jobs, it's usually the same kind of guy wanting the same kind of, same kind of job. What he wants is just security on his vehicle. It doesn't really need to be a whole lot of anything. Something that can do is locks and, he, and, and you know, set up the alarm and also work his trailer simultaneously. How that works is is this, those canine systems or really any Omega system, which is really why that's so cool, um, is you can program that one remote and, multi and do it to multiple alarm systems. So in your case, Casey, you have an A30i8 at your truck, which is an alarm remote start. What I would suggest you do is get the 750i7, which is the step down to the A30i8, which is basically the same system minus a remote start. And take the money that you're gonna save from not needing a remote start for the trailer portion Program the one remote that you have for your A30i8 to function both systems. Not only that, but now when you have the 750i7 that you're going to use as your slave alarm for your trailer, you're going to pick up two extra remotes because each one of these 
Omega Systems is capable of learning four transmitters. So now you're going to have not one, but two two-way LCD remotes, and you're going to have two companion four-way remote controls right there off the bat for your system. So that's already a winner, okay? So now, what I'm going to suggest that you do is use your front system as you always have. However, now I'm saying you're going to put an alarm into your trailer, but you can, you can put the alarm into the trailer, but how does the trailer, how does it work? How does it get power? See, where it's, that's now starting to get a little more complicated. Now, I'm going to presume for you, Casey, you're a lot, a lot of guys that might have a generator, a power supply. A lot of guys I've, that I've done work for in the past use gigantic monster power inverters to run their power tools, charge their Makita drills, um, whatever. It, it's just how it is these days. You got to have you live by power. If you're not, if you're in a rural area, rural area, you don't have a lot of access to an outlet or a wall, whatever. You have to be self-reliant. So let's just say if you do have all these great tools, I don't know exactly what you do have, but I'm going to presume that you do have that requirement. So even if you didn't, you still need to have power. So how you're going to get the power is what I'm going to cover with you right now. If on your trailer you have a four pin flat, you know, typical harness, which does your left positive, uh, left blinker, your right blinker, then you're going to have your ground, which is you know, on a little lug right there, and you're going to have your parking lights, um, and what else is there? Reverse, I don't even know, whatever, whatever the hell a four pin is, I, I can't think right now. That's not going to do it. These four pins is not going to do it. It's going to do the bare minimum what you need to do your trailer. Here's what you do need. You need to get that out of there. You need to get something like this, okay? If you can't see it, I'll get a little bit closer. These here are a little bit more heavy duty. Uh, these are more common these days, especially on for trailer applications where they're using electric brakes. I don't know the weight of your tongue, you know, your situation. Everybody, of course, is different, okay? But for your case, this is what you need to do. If you don't have this already, you need to upgrade this prior to worrying about doing your alarm system because you have to lay out the groundwork prior to doing the rest. This guy right here, you have a center conductor and you have six outer pins. So now I'm going to explain to you what is required in here and what you need to require to do the, the, the extra accessory work that you need to tackle for your security portion. So on your truck you're going to have your left parking light, you're going to have your right parking light, you're going to have your your running lights, you know, your, just your Turn your lights on, your parking lights. All right, and then you're gonna have a ground. Let's just say this here is your ground. So now you got a couple extras. You got one, you got two, you got three. Just say for instance, if you did need parking, um, electric brakes in your, in, your, in your truck, you need at least one for that. So this one here is gonna be, you know, an ignition energized, uh, pin out right here. Now you have two more to the left, so you're going to say this one here and this one here. These are, the, these are what I would suggest that you do. Up at the front where your vehicle is located and your battery is here, plus a negative, okay? Don't worry about the ground. The ground, just grab a bolt underneath the truck. Ground is ground. Okay, and the further you run it up to the front of the vehicle, actually the worse you're going to do, you're going to degradate the ground instead of making it better, so don't do that. But off your battery, put yourself in here what I call an auto reset circuit breaker. Okay, these things are online, they work really wonderfully, and you can, you can get them in anywhere from 30 to 200 amps. Um, they work so awesome, and the reason why is because if a bad guy ever notice what's going on in this in his harness or cut it up, tried to unplug it or did whatever he's gonna to do to this thing, and this thing actually gets gets zapped, you don't want to run anything, any problems back to your initial your your standard you know truck up front. And you of course you want to protect this from the back being isolated because I've seen people make their harnesses too long, drag them and the chains are running on the ground and then they hit a curb and smush and then stuff stuff starts sparking and shorting and going crazy. Let something like this do all the work for you. It's idiot proof. It keeps things safe and that's always a good thing. So safety first. So run this into a, a short few inches into an auto resetting circuit breaker. Run that back and make that on this pin right here into your truck. So on the back of your trailer, you're gonna have a pin that's always constant 12 volts. 
on the other end have one which is going to come in for your ground on the trailer side. You need another one which is going to be a 12 volts. And this one here, when your vehicle is running, it's going to run fresh current from your alternator to charge here. And what I'm going to suggest you do is have a battery inside your trailer mounted to the floor on a battery tray or something. You can go to West Marine and get yourself like a Marine type of mount. Put that in there and then run that to, to power your alarm system. Okay, so now you have this isolated, protected up front, quick disconnect. you got a nice little setup going on. We've already fixed the problem of how you're going to work your remote controls. One remote is going to simultaneously both do the trailer and the truck up front, which is really great. I mean, you can't get a much better scenario than that. And not only that, if you do choose to extend the range using an iPhone or an Android, this you can program to do car one and car two. And not only that, but you can also do that with your two-way remotes, which come with your Omega A30i8. So you can do car one, car two, and not only that, but if you have another vehicle at home, you could actually learn that remote into doing multi-car capability, doing your truck number one that you drive every day, your, your work truck. And if you have a regular like a van for your family, you could have that remote do that. So you can literally have your one remote do all three without carrying around a whole bunch of extra transmitters. So you talk about cool, bro, I'm giving you cool, okay? This is, this is like the way I've been doing this thing for years and I've never had anybody say anything except for, holy shit, am I happy because this thing just works way better than what I expected. So it's not my job to just fulfill your request. I'm here to amaze you. I'm gonna give you some really good ideas, some crazy stuff that you never thought about because who thinks of this stuff? Crazy people like me. So anyway, let me clear this whole mess off and let me just get into a little bit more into the back zone of what you need to do as, as far as you work to, to protect your security end on your trailer right now. Okay, so now I've already created this little image of your truck and your new trailer. Now what I've done is I have this box here which illustrates this here is your main alarm system for your main vehicle, your, your work truck. Over here is your slave alarm system with basically the same one as I mentioned, just minus a remote start. Now, over here in the hitch, where you're connecting onto your trailer, we've already went over all the, all the pinouts for the wiring. So this is gonna be connected to here. You're gonna have a battery in the back in a little tray safely installed with its own little fuse nearby the battery, because I didn't mention that prior. On the front, I, as I mentioned very, you know, in detail about the auto reset and circuit breaker. However, also do the same. Either protect it with an A&L fuse holder, uh, AFS fuse holder, it doesn't matter, maxi fuse holder. But just have that one rated, you know, off of, the, off of its own independent circuit, provided that you're only utiliz utilizing this battery for this alarm system. The alarm will only draw maybe about 7 amps with all day, with the, with the lights, um, the siren, whatever it is, noise makers that you're going to attach to it out of the box. If you're adding extra, extra accessories such as mechanical sirens, extra lights, strobes, whatever your story is that you're adding to it, add all those amperages, amperages accordingly and then fuse it accordingly to the battery system. If you're also utilizing the same battery to run a power inverter, etc., whatever that is, make sure that you, that you independently fuse those circuits from, different from your alarm system. You don't want to have one circuit running off of another. You want to have each independent circuit for everything that you're utilizing off of this battery. Just like how you would install a new wiring harness for a vehicle, you're gonna have a fuse box for each independent labeled circuit. Make sure you treat your, your trailer the exact same way. And if you really wanna get fanatical, label everything with those little, little tags that you put on your wires so that way if you ever have an issue, you can go back to it and refer to it. So, I'm just gonna, I don't know what kind of trailer you have, but I'm gonna use one of the most important, or, or I should say most popular types that I've ever seen around, one that I used to have myself. On the back, it had two barn doors which would open up, okay? Um, I know that some of them, like landscapers or guys who have like motorcycles and whatever, have one door that come down. I have an answer for, for that as far as how to protect that. If you have a side door, I have an answer for a, a way to protect that. And I have another backup which is gonna protect everything as, as a second layer of protection should any of these other ones fail in, in, in the first place. Not that it ever will, um, but in case it, it does, you're gonna have a way, you're, gonna have, you're always gonna to have to feel safe whenever I create a system. I always not just do it for one layer of protection, I, I, I wanna layer this protection, one on top of the other. That, in my opinion, is the right way to do it. Um, might be a little crazy, 
but I'm a little crazy, I guess, so it all works out. So anyway, when you plug in your main alarm system, this one here is, is getting charged because the front vehicle is doing its job. Off of here, you're gonna connect your alarm system. All you need to do is connect on your alarm is gonna be much, much less painless than it was to do your main alarm. All you need back here is constant 12 volts, your ground, and you're gonna connect your door triggers or you're gonna use your trunk trigger. It only has, an alarm system only has two negative inputs, okay? I'm gonna say use the back door, if that's how your, your trailer is laid out, connect that to your, to your door trigger. Make that your, your primary input because that's gonna be your most of the time how you're gonna get in and out of your vehicle, okay? So connect that, also plug in your LED and your valet switch. Reason why I'm gonna say you're gonna do that is because A, the programming switch, you may want to put the alarm into valet mode, you may want to program a setting in or out of the system going forward in the future, and it's important to know where that switch is located. Um, lastly, the LED actually will blink an LED a diagnostic code should anything start pulsing or acting up on your alarm system. It's nice to know when you can disarm your alarm system and look at the LED that's connected to these alarm systems and use that as a tool to figure out, is it my back door? Did my pin switch break? Am I having low voltage issues? Is it this? Does the contact switch fall off? Is the switch open? Is it my... Uh, motion sensor, what's causing the alarms to trigger off, you need to have that tool as well. So it's no extra wiring, it's just a simple plug-in, you can leave it hanging, whatever. You don't have to be fancy about it, but make sure that it, you leave it there. Just put a little pre-thought into how you're going to use your alarm system. The other 90% of the connections, you do not need. Very, very simple. Now, as far as your back door, what I'm going to suggest that you do not use is something like this. These here are mechanical pin switches. I've talked about these in many of videos. Um, using these kinds of brackets, which you can, you know, bend, make L brackets out of, and stuff like that. This is the kind of thing you don't want on your trailer because you, you're going to hit this thing with some kind of jackhammer or whatever crazy tools you're working with. Once this thing busts off and these pin switches go flying out into the highway, you're going to get real aggravated real fast with these things. These are the things you really don't want to have in your trailer. My suggestion to you, and it actually is less work, is to use stuff like this. These are mini contact switches. You can mount these with two-sided tape, they don't even require a lot of drilling because as you know on a trailer there's not a lot of meat to grab onto like there is in a vehicle chassis. So to do that, that's a joy. You can just simply double-sided tape, stick it on, done, mount it in there, adjust it. So that way when your back door, say for instance, the door opens, this is going to stay normally closed. When it opens, triggers the alarm system, it's a joy. Nothing, very simple wiring. One to the ground, one to the rear trip, done. If you have a door, like I was mentioning prior, if you had that big door that just goes down, that, that still might be a valid choice, but I'm gonna give you another option. This here is a mercury switch. Down. It's open. You can see that mercury is gonna connect the circuit and close it to trigger your alarm system. So these here are a good valid option. These work really well. And that's what I would use on the door, on the back of your primary door, as well as your side door. If you have a, a, a roof hatch to es escape hot air, or if you have a little window, those work really well. But even on sliding type of scenarios, they work super good. And in the back, I would do that second layer of protection that I personally think is a good, good idea. There's two different ways that you could do this. One would be something like this. This here is an AU85TN. This here is a magnetic shock sensor and it also has a microphone built into it so that way this will actually pick up noise which could be a good thing or a bad thing because if you're in a noisy area thunder heavy rains clapping trucks on highways it depends on the scenario i mean they can be very unforgiving and this could really turn into a nightmare very quickly uh, i'm not a fan of having them set up in the, in the vehicle, especially when you're not around it because kids, you know, or, or people can get real upset with the noise maker if the thing is going off, you're not around. I mean, unless you have a two-way like this car like I was telling you about, you know, you have no way of knowing what the heck's going on. If this thing's going off, it could be draining your battery, defeating your alarm system, uh, and bothering the whole neighborhood. So maybe not the best idea. However, if you use it and tune it down and have it adjusted really well, I think that it could be to use to your advantage, okay? Because in some cases, crowbars, they might, you know, tr trigger something in a better way than other sensors can, you know? Because, you know, if you have something like that going on, or somebody banging your door, hitting it with a sledgehammer, you know, these other sensors that we were talking about, they're not going to pick that up until it's too late. Because once they're far enough apart, these things will never trigger. So another thing you might want to consider, and these things work tremendously well, 
are called proximity sensors or radar sensors. I use the hell out of these things, and I love these sensors. What they do is just like in a, in a home, or if this is a long system, when you walk past it, beep, 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 they, they go off. They're dual zones, so that way you have a one away, so that way when someone gets near the proximity of the trailer, it will beep, automatically set that, make the lights blink, and if you have anything else connected to it to create audible noise or a visual deterrent, all that stuff will trigger to let somebody know, hey, don't mess around, this thing's got an alarm on it, just keep, well, keep on walking. And it also has an instant interior zone trigger, so that we have, if someone were to get inside and it sees that motion, it's going to trigger, it's going to make the alarm system go off indefinitely for the two 60 second cycles, and then you have an independent control over one zone from the other. So both of them equally important. I definitely swear by having a proximity sensor, especially for your alarm system. If you don't have one in your truck up front, it's great for there too as well. Just really, it's a great choice. Now just to recap real quick, this here is the AU46, these are the Mercury switches that you can use if you're interested. These guys, contact switches, they're an AU45. The glass break slash mic audio sensor, these are AU-85TN. And my favorite, the dual zone proximity sensor, is the AU-94TM. Must have. TM stands for the man. So anyway, um, all that stuff is on our site, so grab what you need to do, get your goodies, and get the system working. Um, if I talk too fast or if I didn't cover a particular topic that you found to be of interest, um, let me know. Or if anybody watches this video and you have a similar situation, you have a trailer and you're really sh not sure about how to wire it, how to expand on it, enhance it, secure it, whatever the case is, I'm here. So if you have a question, this is not just for this particular viewer who had a question, it's for you or anybody who watches this video. I'm here to help every one of you guys. So that's it for today. Happy wiring.